Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. I have a few new things that are available in my Etsy shop, so I wanted to do a quick video to show you guys what they are and talk to you a little bit about them. And um, if you hear kind of, it's super windy today, so if you hear the wind, I am so sorry. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing I can do about it. I can hear it, um, but I don't know how it translates onto the video uh, itself. So anyway, I just want to kind of give you the heads up that there, what is this? Oh, <laughs> that there is uh, a whole lot of wind. Okay, so I have some labels and I have some scripty papers that I want to share with you today. I'm going to start with the labels. These are available in my Etsy shop and I'll have that link down below. Okay, so what I did was I have some distressed labels that are part of my scrap journal add-on, basically amazing scrap journal add-on. And they are, they, they are a huge hit. Everybody just loves them. And they are so super versatile and I use them for everything. I'm finding myself going to them constantly. Like if I need a little extra something on a page, then I grab a label. I don't know, they just add something extra to the page. It's just, I don't know, I've just really been loving them. People have been asking for them. If they didn't buy the Basically Amazing Scrap Journal, they wanted them um, alone, standalone. So what I did was I split them out. They're not exactly, exactly the same. There are a few elements that are the same as the Scrap Journal. So if you do have the um, add-on Scrap Journal, there are a few that are the same and then there are a few that uh, are not. One thing is I split them out into three different listings. So there's the rectangle label and that's what the listing photo looks like. There's the rectangle. There is the square and that's what the listing photo looks like. And then there is the circle labels and that's what the listing photo looks like. So let me show you real quick. Let me talk to you a little bit about them. Um, the rectangles come in three different sizes. There's a large, a medium, and a small. I kind of have that on the, on the listing photos um, as well. So what I ended up doing is with all of the large rectangles, I did a full sheet of the one color because I also found with these add-on scrap journal labels is that there was all the different colors were on one sheet and if I just needed to use uh, one or two of the colors over and over and over again, I had to print the same sheet and then have all those extra labels. So on the largest one, I decided to just have a solid color or I'm sorry, the same color on the whole sheet. So this is the largest of the rectangles. So there's the vintage color. I guess I can just flip through these really quick. There's the vintage. There is the green color. It's probably gonna not translate so well on your screen, but there's a pretty green. Then there is the red. Now this is the same colors as the scrap journal. The colors are the same except for one, I added one additional color. Um, and the large rectangle labels are the same as in the Basically Amazing scrap journal. The same size, I mean. So there's the red. Then here is the purple. And then here's a teal color. And then here's a blue. And then this is the addition. I did black and white. And let me show you why. Well, first of all, we just need a black and white, don't we? We just do. Second of all, I made some more pages for my, my um, ephemera keeper, ephemera holder, ephemera keeper album that we made. If you want to see how we made this, I'll link that up here in the cards and down below. But look what I did, you guys. I foiled them. Okay, so if you want to foil your, um, do I have them loose somewhere? If you want to foil, I guess I didn't. Um, if you want to foil your labels, you have to print on a laser or go to a photo place, or not a photo place, a, um, you know, paper, uh, shoot, a printer <laughs> of some sort. It needs to be laser. Uh, ink and then I ran it through my mink machine. Is it called a mink? My memory is getting so bad you guys and I foiled them. So these are printed onto sticker paper So I can just they're ready to go and I can just literally take that off. Is it gonna is it gonna show you? Maybe if I stick it over here under the light. Look at that! 
Okay, so this is why I added the black and white. So again, you need to print them on laser, the black uh, version, you need to print on laser in order to get the uh, foiling. Um, do I have, where's the ones that are just black? I printed out somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I, I've been doing so much cutting. Um, okay, so anyway, here's the black version. And if you print it on the laser, you can foil them. If not, you can just use them just like this because sometimes you do need just a black and white label. So here's the medium size. So what I did was I took two uh, colors and, and shrunk them down and put them on one page. Now this is the not, this size is not the same as in the scrap journal, it's different. Um, so it's slightly um, smaller, obviously, than the large. So there's the blue green together. There is the red purple together. There's the vintage and teal together. And then on the black one, I just did a full sheet of the black in this size because again, um, if you wanted to foil them, you know, you could have one sheet printed. I mean, you could have one sheet printed like this um, with a laser printer and foil the whole thing. And that's a lot of labels. That is, what is six times four? 24, 24 labels. Uh, on one sheet. So that would be a lot of foiled labels. I mean, can you imagine? I, my, my mind is just spinning at the moment uh, of things that we can do with those. And then here is the third size. So this is the small. So this has four colors on it, um, but this size is not in the uh, scrap journal either. So this has uh, those blue, green, uh, red, and purple um, on this one. And this one has vintage, teal, purple, and red. I went ahead and filled in a, a duplicate color on one page because, you know, there was only six colors because I did the black the same, uh, all the, you know, I put all black on one page for that reason alone if you wanted to foil a page, okay? So I had to fill in that empty space, so I just picked my favorite two colors uh, together, the purple and the red, I don't know. So you get two sets of purple and red. And then that's the black. So that's the small. So you get three sizes in the rectangle. And then in the square, you get three sizes as well. So there's the large, there's the medium, and there's the small. And so here's the vintage. So the, on the large ones, this is the same as in the basically amazing uh, scrap journal add-on, but you get all one color on one sheet. So there's the vintage, there's the green, there's the red, there's the purple, there's the teal, there's the blue, and then there's the black. Um, again, these would be fun to foil, and I did foil some. And you could, if you wanted to, just cut it in half or cut a piece off and just foil that. You don't have to foil a whole sheet, okay? Um, just so you know. And then here is the medium size. I don't know if that's, I don't know. Let me look and see if that's the same. I didn't compare all of them and I should have. That was my mistake. So this would be the next size down. No. The scrap journal has four sizes of each one of the shapes. And in this case, there's only three. So here's a blue, uh, blue, this is the medium size, so there's blue and green together, there's red and purple together, there is teal and vintage together, and then there is a sheet of the black and white. And then the smallest size, there's four colors to a sheet, and I mean think about it, I mean you just print this one time and you've got so many labels. It is crazy. It's so it's such a good value. This uh, these listings, it's such a good value. Um, so you got green and blue, and red and purple. I did the same thing. Uh, vintage teal and red and purple again on the smallest, and then a full sheet of the black and white. All right. So the circle labels. These have four, and these are the exact same sizes as the scrap journal. And the reason for that is because they correspond to a circle punches. And the reason I did that is, is sometimes it's so hard to just fussy cut a circle. So it made it made more sense to just have them correspond to your paper punches. That way, if you had it, you can just punch, 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 and it, it'd be super, super easy. 
So, but I set these up just a little bit different um, than they are in the scrap journal. Plus, they're, the black and white is not in the scrap journal. Okay, so this one here is the two and a half inch. Let me get my punches out. So the largest is the two and a half inch punch size, and I'll have them linked um, down below to Amazon if you want to check them out, or to um, a scrapbook store. Let's see. I'll, I'll link. I'll try to find a couple different places where you can purchase. So the largest is the two and a half inch, and you get a full size of the vintage, and then this is the medium right here. So then you get a whole sheet of the three other sizes. Okay, so you get a full size of the large, you get a full sheet of the large, and then you get a full sheet of the three different sizes. So here's the medium, here's the small, here's the extra small. So the medium is a two inch punch. The small is a one and a half inch, inch punch. And then the smallest, extra small, is a one inch punch. So before we had a whole sheet of the one inch, and I mean, I just can't imagine using a whole sheet um, at one time of a one color of a one inch. So that's why I went ahead and kind of merged these together. So you get um, one full sheet of the large and then one sheet of the three other sizes. So there's the vintage, here's the large in the green, and then here's the three other sizes in the green, here's the large in the red, and then the three other sizes in the red. Here is the purple in the large. Purple, other three sizes. Here is the teal in the large. And the teal in the other three sizes. Here's the blue. Here's the blue in the other three sizes. And then here is the black. And the black in the other three sizes. So they're, uh, they're all separate. So the listings are separate, the rectangle, the square, and the circles. They're all separate. Okay, a couple things I wanted to remind you guys about when it comes to printing things like this out. Anything that has colors to it, feel free to look through your printer settings because all printers are different. Every single printer, even if you purchase the exact same printer I have, the colors still may be off. Your printer settings are probably set differently than mine. But feel free to go in there and look around and change one thing at a time. Write that down because one of the mistakes I made very early on in my printing escapades were that I didn't write those things down. I would get confused. What did I just change? Or I would change too many things at one time. Don't do that. Just print or I'm sorry, test one page change a setting like if it's heavy on the yellow go into your printer settings find those settings that, that that you can change the blues the reds the yellows not the reds the magentas so the the blue the red or, sorry the blue <laughs> the blues the magentas and the um yellows i'll get it out of one of these minutes <laughs> um and it usually says like cayenne or cyan however you want to say it um but anyway, so tell your printer to quit laying down so much yellow. So, you know, knock that back a few points and then do another test print. Um, don't print the whole thing. Just print one thing, you know, just print uh, one of the multicolored pages. Like if you get the rectangle one, you might want to just print one of the sheets that has the four different colors um, on it so that you can see what those colors look like, right? So just do one test print, change one thing. Um, the quality matters, like it, if you have it on um, Eco, where it just it does it, prints it really, really fast, but it doesn't lay down as much ink and it, the quality may not be as, as nice. Or if you have it on photo quality, that might be too much. It might be pow, in your face. You may not want that for labels, that kind of thing. So check all your settings and write them down. You know, just write them down. So if you don't want to keep them on that setting, then you can go back to your default settings and print as, as normal. Just write them down. Put yourself a little note with your, with, your, um, with your rectangle labels. You know, just put yourself a little posty. This is what I changed to get this color. Um, 
but yeah, just remember to write those down, okay? So all printers are different, and just, you know, if you are, um, if you're having difficulties, feel free to contact me. Obviously, I'm not a printer expert. I can't, like, tell you what to do with your printers. I only know my own printers, <laughs> but I can maybe give you some ideas if you need some help. Or in my Facebook group, they are amazing in there. You could ask that question, and you will get, because they're from all over, you know, obviously, I'm U.S., so they're, you know, I have people in there from all over. They could help you if you're from a different part of the world. They can help you with their settings or what theirs might look like. And that also brings me to one more thing I get asked quite a bit. Um, these are meant for eight and a half by 11. They're, they're, they're sized for eight and a half by 11 paper. However, if you have an A4, you can still print these out. Um, you may have a little bit of blank space on the top or the bottom, um, but all you want to do is make sure you can see the whole image. That's all you have to do. It, you don't have to have um, eight and a half by 11 paper to print these out. You can print them on A4. Just make sure you can see the whole image. Yours won't be the exact same size as mine are, uh, but um, they'll be super close, you know? So anyway, yeah, you don't have to have a uh, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You can print them on A4, totally fine. Also remember you can print on regular copy paper, you can print on sticker paper, you can print on shipping labels, transparent, clear shipping labels, you can, um, you know, the full sheets. You can print on vellum, you can print on transparencies, you can print on pattern paper, you can print on cardstock, you can print onto a coffee stained paper. Whatever you normally print on, you can print these labels on. So. Don't hesitate to try different things. You can print on parchment paper. You can anything, anything, colored paper. Um, sky's the limit. So I will down below. I'll link my Facebook group if you want to, in case you want to join, because they've known about these labels for uh, a week or so. I'm not sure when this will post, but they've already been. Um, they've already had access to these labels. Uh, being in that group. So I will link that down below. If you want to join my Facebook group, you just need to request to join and then answer a few questions. And then the moderators will look at it. If you don't answer your questions, they won't accept you into the group. So um, please remember to kind of answer those questions. But anyway, it's a great place to find out a lot of the unknowns that you may be concerned about or things that you have questions about, but you're not quite sure how to form that question. You know, if you just ask it in that group, there's lots of people there will help you. Lots of people know the answers. Lots of people have a lot of experience with my templates, with printing, with, with all of that. So it's a great place to be and they're wonderful and they're very encouraging and I love them dearly. And I also really quick wanted to show you some of examples of where I've used labels. So this is the album that we're working on currently. Uh, I don't know if we'll be done with it by then, but this is this is the one. This is the March album of the month, and I have a playlist specifically for that. I will link it here on the cards and down below if you want to make this. Oh, if you want to try to make this with me. Um, but anyway, here's one of the labels right here. Now it's not this size label, but it's from the ad, the, the scrap journal add-on. So there's a label there, um, and it's just I mean it's just perfect. It just it did exactly what it needed to do. Um, here's labels here. You see that there? Label there. There's a label over here. See this? This is the same size as the uh, scrap journal, the one that um, I've released on its own. There's another label there. I mean, they're just so, they're just, uh, they're just so fun. They just add that perfect something, you know? There's another label. There's a label. No label on there. Um, did I put any labels on this? No, I don't remember. Nope, no labels on there. There's not a label there. Um, see, and there's labels on here, right there and right there, and on both of these. See, they're just not, it's a perfect place to put some information about that picture. I just love them. And I love that they have colors, that they're colored, you know, that there's color to them. There's label and label. Um, and that might be it out of this one. Um, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I think that's it on this one. Nothing on the back. So there's that project. And then of course, there is the ephemera holder itself. There's a label right there on the cover, right? And did I put a label? Oh, I didn't put a label on this one. Did I put a label on any of these? I haven't done that quite yet, I don't think. What's back here? I had labels on them. Or is it my other one? Oh, it's my other one. So yeah, so I use labels on my cover. There's a label on the side there. 
And then I think I have labels. There's another label, even though I haven't put anything there, but there is a, another label. I did put labels on the fronts of here, but again, I still haven't titled it, but, but that's okay. You know, it's just cute. It just adds a little extra something. So I just wanted to share um, some of the ways I've been using labels. So anyway, they're just, they're just great. They're just a fun little extra accent. I haven't been using a lot of the square and the circle labels, so I need to, I need to do that. I've been using mostly the rectangle, which is the, seems to be the most popular uh, label. So, um, so there's that. I feel like I'm supposed to be telling you something else about these. I don't remember. Don't forget to try the foiling. Amazing, okay? It's so cute. I cannot wait to use that. All right, all right. and I'll try to link stuff like that for you guys down below. Or I may even make a, a special list for this video. I don't know. Just so you can see all of it in one place. Okay, so next up, the scrap, scra psh, the scrappy, <laughs> scripty papers. I decided to make a new set of papers because sometimes you just want some scripty stuff in the background. You know, you just want it. And I used it in the upcoming album, the April's album of the month. I used these papers. And I'm trying to think if I'm gonna show you or not. Maybe I can give you a sneak peek at the end of the video. I'll give you a sneak peek of the album, just a real quick, just so you can see the papers in use, I guess. So, Oh, here's a good example of, well, I don't know if it's a good example, but I have two printers and obviously they're gonna print different. One's a laser, one's an inkjet, but their settings are different. So this top one is my laser, this bottom one is my inkjet. And I don't know how well you can see um, the difference in color. So eventually I will have to add these to uh, my, where's my book at? I'm gonna have to add these to my little swatch book that I have. Cause I use this cause I have like my HP and my Epson right next to each other. So I like to have that so I can flip through going, yeah, I want to use these. So, um, just like I have for my background designs. And if you want to see how I made this swatch book, I will link that up here and down below. As a matter of fact, I think it's on the last time I did the background design release. Um, this semi-annual background design. I think that's the last time that's when I made this. So in April, at, towards the end of the month, I'm going to have another uh, background, a limited background design release where you can buy, purchase all of my backgrounds with the exception, unless I can come up with the next backgrounds that I'm going to be using, the two newest ones, the script, or script, <laughs> the letters and the postcards will not be there. I don't have any new backgrounds that I'm going to be putting on templates yet. I mean, I have a few new things I'm working on, but I don't have the backgrounds for those yet. Okay, so and as a, for a consolation prize, <laughs> let's call it that. I've, I put together these sets of scripty papers um, that are going to be available all the time for you guys to, to use. So let me show you, let me show you, um, let me, I'm going to put one of these uh, versions aside here. Whoops. I forgot how, uh, this is what the uh, Etsy listing photo looks like. It looks just like this. I'll have it linked down below in the description box. So if you want to check it out, let me put that one over here. Oops. So they come in. There's four different PDFs for this set of papers. There is, and the reason I, there's several reasons I did this. Um, so I'll try to talk about them as, as we go. So there's your regular eight and a half by 11 PDF. So I did the portrait and the landscape because, let, let me get to a set here. There's a portrait. There's a portrait and there's the landscape. So depending on what you need, because mom, I keep my templates in mind when I do these things, because some of my templates, you need the landscape version in order for it to print out correctly. Um, and you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys that, have, that use my templates, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So there is a PDF that has the eight and a half by 11 
portrait and landscape version in there. There is a PDF for the 12 by 12, which I know a lot of people are getting away from, but you have to have a wide format printer for the 12 by 12, the 11 by 17, and the 13 by 19, if you want to print them out those sizes. So, um, the 12 by 12, there's a whole PDF for the 12 by 12. There's a PDF for the 11 by 17. Now that's the first time I've included that in with background designs. I really enjoy the 11 by 17 paper size, you guys. So I made one for that. And the reason why I made them like this, cause you could print the, the landscape version. You could print that onto 11 by 17, but it's gonna be much bigger. So I wanted you to be able to have the same size print you know the same si the same uh, size of the script on whatever paper size you're printing on okay so 11 by 17 and then the 13 by 19 size which has the 12 by 12 on it and the two six by sixes and i've printed out um a, a um i've printed out a what am i trying to say <laughs> an example of each one of these sizes for you guys so there are four different PDFs in this list. Actually, I think there's five because there is, there is five. One of the PDFs has a swatch page, okay, on there. So I thought you guys would appreciate that. So, yeah, so there's that. And then also, each script is available in three different colorways. So there's the original, which is more of a whitish vintage color. And then there is a vintage, and then there is a black and white version. And I forgot, I meant to foil the black and white. Not, not just for black and white. I mean, it's not just for foiling the black and white because sometimes you do need a black and white script for whatever you're working on. Like how beautiful is the black and white script on top of a piece of coffee stained paper or on top of a colored cardstock and stuff like that. So, so anyway, so that comes in all three different colorways. And I felt that was important because a lot of the times, if I've got this real vintagey looking script and I love that script and I'm trying to make it work with my project, but it's just not because it's just too vintagey. <laughs> the white one that's a little bit softer of a vintage works better. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I decided to go ahead and do it in three colorways. And it also gives you more bang for your buck, you know? Okay, so this, this is the swatch page. So you get, um, it says one, two, so it's page number one, page number two in your PDF. I listen to you guys and I'm going to try to remember to do that. So when you're in your PDF, um, when you're in your PDF, let's say you're at the eight and a half by 11 PDF, page number one is this page. And then at the very end of your PDF, there should be a title page or is the title page with the swatch page? I don't know. I cannot remember if, I think the title page is in these swatches. Yeah. Okay. And that's something I don't know what, I don't know my brain. I've been outside you guys when working in the garden, we built two new garden beds. We did the raised garden beds and we've been working and working and working. Anyway, my, my nails are messed up. My hands are scratched up. <laughs> my back is killing me. Um, we're doing all kind of landscaping maintenance and all that jazz. And it's, anyways, so my brain is just, I think it's just my, my brain is just not working right now. <laughs> not very good. So the swatch pages, this is the portrait. This is the landscape, this portrait, landscape, portrait, landscape. So this is the, actually the same script on all three of these. It's just in those three different colorways. But anyway, so one, two, three, four, five, six, those are the page numbers. Plus I like to have swatch pages because my printer sometimes will print heavy on a color or, or, or I, I'm, I know that doesn't make sense, but like sometimes your printer just does things a little different or you have different settings or maybe you want them a little darker or a little, little lighter. So again, playing with those printer settings, just remember to write them down. So there's a swatch page for the eight and a half by 11. And here is the next version of the next script um, so that all three of colorways are on one page. So page numbers, and then here's the next one and the next one. So that's all eight and a half by 11. Those are all the swatches. So there's 24 pages in the eight and a half by 11. So here is, I'm going to try to do this quick, but so just remember that it's going to be the original version, I guess is what I can call it of the script, the vintage version of this same script, and then the black and white version of this same script. Okay. So I'm gonna try to give you as best a uh, good at the best as look as <laughs> the best look at it as I can. It's hard to see through these monitors um, and on screen and stuff. So here's one. 
So there is the portrait and then the landscape. And then here it is, vintage portrait landscape. Here it is, black and white portrait landscape. And then here's the next script. Here it is in its original portrait and then landscape. Here it is in the vintage portrait and landscape. Here it is in the black and white portrait and landscape. And then here, oh, also I forgot to tell you guys that my mom's handwriting is in some of these. Um, not this one. There, she's in, it's in two of them. The first one I showed you, and then I think it's going to be the last one I show you. Uh, but it's not this one. So there's the original portrait. Landscape. You see how big that script is? I love it. And then here's the vintage version portrait. Landscape. And then the black and white version portrait. Landscape. And then here's one that has my mom's handwriting on it, you guys. Here's the original portrait. And this is a bigger script, too. And landscape. And then here's the vintage portrait. And landscape. And then black and white version portrait. And landscape. So yeah, the first one I showed you has my mom's handwriting on it as well. You just can't see it. It's very, it's, it's layered on here pretty good, but it's on, it's on that one as well. Okay, so those are the different, that's the eight and a half by 11. So of course, the 11 by 17, there is no portrait and landscape. It's just, you know, the long version. Um, same with the 12 by 12, it's just one version or one, you know, it, there's not a portrait and a landscape and the same with the 13 by 19. So let me show you some ideas. Or let me show you paper sizes, and then I'll show you some ideas. Um, okay, so I use my labels to, <laughs> to mark these, you guys. <laughs> Sorry, this is getting so lengthy. I'll put timestamps down below if you need to go back. Um, anyways, okay, so again, you just saw the portrait and the landscape. So this is 8 half by 11, but you can print these A4, you guys. Don't think that just because they're formatted 8 half by 11, you can still print them A4. Just unclick fit to, or click fit to page or whatever it is that makes you fill up that page with the image, okay? So they get the 8 half by 11, which you've seen. And then this is the 11 by 17. So it's the same size script, just on a larger piece of paper. And I I've been loving the size, you guys, loving the size. And again, um, all right, 11 by 17. And then here is the 12 by 12. Now, why did I do the 13 by 19 with the 12 by 12 and then the 12 by 12? I'll tell you why. The 12 by 12, when you, most printers, and my printer included, it will leave a border. Not all printers. Some printers are borderless. Some printers say they're borderless and they're not. So, um, so anyway, so this isn't true 12 by 12. The paper itself is 12 by 12, but there's a eighth of an inch all the way around that doesn't have any, uh, anything on it. But still, all the same, you can print on the back side of your scrapbook paper with this and it will still be pretty, okay? If you have a large format printer. And then the last one, this is the 13 by 19. So on the top here is the 12 by 12, but it's bigger. So you can literally cut this out and be 12 by 12 uh, two 12 by 12 and it'll be end to end. Okay. And then on the bottom here is two uh, six by sixes, but they are, and the reason I put added those, I didn't want to waste that space. Plus sometimes you really like that little small, you know, small writing. Um, but these are bigger than six by six. So that way you can get a true six by six if you needed a six by six. Okay. So that's why I included all these different sizes. And so let me show you something else. Um, on the, if you don't have a wide format printer and you want to utilize these other files, I printed this is the 13 by 19 file. I printed on eight and a half by 11. So I just unclicked fit to page and it shrunk it down. Or did I click fit to page? Whatever I did, it shrunk down to fit. <laughs> and this is kind of like a seven by seven here. And then these are like three and a half by three and a half little squares. So you can totally use 
the larger files on your eight and a half by 11 or your A4 paper, okay? You don't have to have a wide format printer. Here is another version of that. This is the 12 by 12 file, and I think this ends up being like eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter or something like that. Um, but I printed the 12 by 12 onto the eight and a half by 11, and it makes it a smaller, like this is a really small print. You know, sometimes you need, again, sometimes you need a really fine, small, scripty print. And then uh, this as well. I think this is smaller than this, of course, but so there's that. And then I've got one more idea. If you have a regular pa uh, printer, uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you can print different sizes in your printer. Even if it's a regular printer, you can't print 13 by 19 in a regular printer, but you can print different paper sizes. You can even print, you can tell your printer to print on an eight by eight or a six by six or four by six. You can tell your printer to do these things, okay? Don't forget that, that would be fun. How fun would it be to take the eight and a half by 11 portrait or, or landscape and print it on four by six? How cute would that be? Of course, there'd be a border, but then that's sometimes you want that, you know? But anyway, one of the paper sizes that I forget about a lot of times is this is legal size. So this is eight and a half by 14. This is something that your standard printer will print on. So I just printed the 11 by 17 file on the eight and a half by 14 paper. And it's, it's, you know, it's just another form of another paid, another way, another, uh, um, use for those files. It's a little bit smaller than the 11 by 17, but not by much. And this is a good size um, for making signatures and things too, as well. So if you wanted, I didn't, I don't have eight and a half by 14 paper. I had to cut this down and I've been searching. I did a real quick search and I didn't find a lot of cardstock options for eight and a half by 14, but there's a lot of paper options. So I'm gonna order some 28 pound of eight and a half by 14 paper because I think this is a fun use as well. And you can do that with any of the papers that you have that are 11 by 17 in size. So if you have the, the add-on scrap journal, there are a bunch of papers in there as well. And there is 11 by 17 file in there. You could do the same thing. You can print that onto eight and a half by 14 if you want to as well. So I just thought that would be fun to show you and just another option. It's just another option. So you can utilize all your files and just print on different size papers. Okay. Oh, and these are not the same as what's in the scrap journal, by the way. Um, I was, I've already been asked that. Again, these have, uh, my Facebook group had early access to these. They were aware that they were there. Okay, if you've stuck around this long, I might as well show you um, some examples of it in use in the April's Album of the Month. And also, there's a giveaway in the April Album of the Month as well. So I thought I would share that with you really quick. If you waited this long, if you watched this video this long, then you deserve to know there's a giveaway coming. <laughs> okay, here I'll show you a quick, um, not a flip per se, but I'm gonna show you those papers because uh, I used them in this album. And it's funny, I have, I have started editing those videos and I say things like, I'm gonna, hopefully these will be ready for you guys by the time, you know, so I got them done. Um, but here on the spine, I used one of them and I just love them. I just love the papers. And then I used it on this element here. So I used it on this element and this was actually part of the paper collection. So that's not, you know, that's not a printed uh, version. That's the scrap journal. Oh, I didn't glue it down, you guys. Whoops. <laughs> Apesy. Um, I used it on this element here. I'm trying not to give away too much. Um, but I'm going to have to give away something in order to show you. Just, I'm going to cut this part out. Uh, okay, I used it here. This is one of my mom's handwriting ones, right? Isn't that pretty? Doesn't it look nice? It's just a nice background for things to sit on, for things to stand out from. I used it here on this page. See? Lovely. This is the vintage version of, that's not my mom's handwriting, but it's a vis, the vintage version of one of them, right? Super cute. It just looks really nice. It's just really, really nice. But yeah, so again, the, the, it's the same but different on the fins. So I won't, but I just wanted to show you that I use them and the, how nice they look with, um, in album pages, you know, in your mini album pages. So 
yeah anyway that was just a real quick flip if you want to see what at the, you know that was album this is the April album um, and there's only seven videos of the April album of the month so I did manage to get that filmed rather quickly and I don't know when they're going to start so I'm sorry about that you guys but all right, you guys, that's really all I have for you today. I just wanted to share uh, all the new things that I have in my shop. They're all linked down below in the description box. So the three new labels, they're just fun embellishments, uh, can be used a lot. And there is the new set of scripty papers. So you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these products. And don't forget to head over to my Etsy shop and pick these up. And let me know too if there's other things that are elements of other printables that you think uh, would be a really good standalone embellishment. Let me know and I'll see if I can't make that happen. So yeah. All right, you guys. I will see you next time. Bye.